Hi everyone, it's Anne. Welcome to my channel, Annie's Abstract Art, where I do just that. I love doing various types of abstract art, but I have to say expressive abstract painting is my favorite because you're working with so many different layers and colors and media and mark making. It's just so liberating. I love the process. So I love the way this piece turned out. I can't wait to show you how I did it. The video will start now. Enjoy. So here I'm starting with an 8x8 canvas board that I'm recycling using a palette knife. I'm laying down some white acrylic and then with a brush I smooth it all over the canvas kind of going around and cleaning it up a bit very thin coat and it was a good base for the next color which is raw sienna and so right here in this area because it's um the first time it's hitting the canvas it's very dark but while it's still on the brush i add it to other areas of the canvas and when i'm done the entire canvas is covered with this color, but some areas are darker than others. You can see um, how this one quadrant is very, very dark. You can see the white still. And when I was done with that, uh, I started adding darker colors. So this is actually uh, black mixed with alcohol. And I wasn't sure how strong it was going to be. It's very thin. It's almost like uh, watered down with the alcohol. So when I added it the second time, I was a little bit more generous. And it mixed with the raw sienna. And it turned kind of like a taupey gray, which I loved. And I love how there's still a strip of, a, of black there. And then I just blend it in around the center and this is van dyke brown and there's still the gray from what i just did is still on the brush so the gray kind of dominated the van dyke brown so i added more of the van dyke brown a couple of times to get more um, a saturated color and then added the raw sienna on top of that grayish brown. And I love doing that because the more you layer, you get new colors as long as the colors are still like if it's wet on wet. And then parts of it, like that little bit of gray at the top off center is kind of peeking through. So that's always a lot of fun. So I'm just blending and blending just to smooth over the brush strokes and I'm still mixing I'm still mixing the gray and the brown in some spots and now with a scraping tool since everything is still wet I'm scraping into the areas that I painted really pulling some of it um, away and drying it really well rotating the canvas to see how everything looks from a different perspective. And then this is a light blue by Folk Art. It's called uh, Blue Echo. And so with a smaller brush, just going across the center. And, you know, because I don't want any um, color to completely dominate, except for the raw sienna. And this is Midnight by Folk Art. So we have two shades of the blue. And I, I like how the colors are working with each other. You have the browns and the grays and the raw sienna and the blues. And they're all complementing each other. And with the flat brush, I am doing a little bit of scrumbling, uh, dry brushing, um, that dark blue. Just to get, you know, good texture, work it in. Really, really rubbing it in. I beat up my brushes and then with a palette knife scraping into it to get more lines 
and texture mark making. And now with the water brush, I um, add in kind of like a big half circle with vintage white. And you'll notice that I always have the uh, heat tool in my other hand. I dry as I work unless I want the canvas to be wet for some reason. Like for mark making or blending. And I'm always rotating the canvas just to see where I am, if I like another perspective better. And this is clear just so I'm coating the entire canvas because I'm going to be using soft pastels in many different colors and you need a gritty surface to hold the pastels. And I dried it really well and now I'm making a glaze with burnt umber, alcohol and glycerin because I am going to glaze over all of the pastels once I add them and so I mixed it and these are the soft pastels by arts a r r t x they're fantastic they go on like butter so I'm using um, different variations of browns gold orange and some blue because that's pretty much the the color palette and because the clear gesso dries very, very gritty, it grabs all of that pastel and there's no dust and it goes on, I'm telling you, like cream. It's amazing. Look at the color. It, it's so strong. Look at that blue. It's amazing. And you can, you can layer with these colors. And depending on what kind of art you're doing, you can blend them with either a sponge, your fingers, and in this case, I'm not going to be blending them. I'm going to be glazing over them. So I'm adding the yellow over the blue, over the gray. And now I'm pouring the glaze that I just made over the canvas. And instead of rubbing it in, I'm using gravity. And then with a flat brush, I am gently pulling it down. And the pastel is, you know, very vulnerable under all that moisture. So I'm being careful not to brush it away. So I'm going in different directions. And now here I spritzed everything with the entire canvas with rubbing alcohol because I want to keep it very wet so I can do some mark making because if if the um, canvas dried I would have to really work hard to get the marks but now not only am I getting the marks very easily um, the, those thin lines but you'll see I can scrape away and really drill down very easily, which I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't keep it wet. So I'm drying at the same time, but I know that everything is still kind of very tacky. And right here, you can see how soft it is. The surface is very soft. Right there, I mean, it just, I could almost drill down to, to the white canvas. And it's just so easy. It's, it's like I'm drawing with the palette knife. And I love this part, just doing a lot of cross hatching 
just get really great textures and marks. You can hardly see what I'm doing right here, but I'm kind of distressing the surface versus doing heavy lines or pulling it up like I did with the other marks. It's still very soft. I've been drying it the whole time, but it's very, very soft. And this is so much fun, just going around and making marks. Now I'm doing some curved lines. And right here, I, just going a, along that curve like about a dozen times. And here I'm using a scraper tool to kind of dig into the canvas and get some really great lines. And this is a king size black Sharpie marker. I'm just darkening that area in the center. And then with the leftover glaze, I'm going over the black and working all around the canvas, choosing some areas in the center to really get some depth. And you'll see at the end how much depth there is in this piece when it's out of the lights. Rotating it to see it from a new perspective. And now this is a stencil and this is um, gold pan pastel. It's very subtle, but you have to spray it with fixative, otherwise it'll rub away. Few spritz. I'll leave a list of everything that I've used in the description box below. So rotating. And now this is a plastic scraper tool and with that blue echo, just making some markings. And this is the soft pastel in a very similar color. I spritzed it and it kind of got too wet, so I went over it with the blue echo. And then dried it halfway and then scraped through. I mean, I really scraped hard here. I kind of almost carved into it. And that was great. I love the way that looked. And it is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I love doing this piece. If you have any questions about my process or materials, leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And I will leave a list of everything I used. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will because I upload regularly. Until the next video, take care. I'll see you soon.